her in Christ. Amen. 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 Lord, for a fresh touch, Lord, draw us close to you this year like yes, never before. Lord. Lord God, we worship you. We know, Lord God, as we press in, Lord Jesus, to know more of you, to see you, Lord, that you will, you desire to reveal yourself to us, Lord. Draw us to that place you would have for us, Lord, this year. Lord God, we just thank you and give you praise for what you're doing in our lives, Lord Jesus, as we press in to see you. Amen? Hallelujah. Aren't you thankful for the blood of Jesus? Aren't you thankful for his coming? Well, I am
We just believe, and he does the rest. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. That thing in your spirit, come on. Don't be afraid. Maker of my heart. 
Thank you. 
takes away all fear and all guilt. And as he works in us and changes us, we don't have to worry about the past and where we were and where we messed up. Aren't you thankful? He doesn't hold it over you and say, well, you know, you're here again and you did this and I don't know if I can keep working with you on that. It's not like that. He's God. He loves us so much. And he keeps changing us. He's so faithful and so good. And it's just so much to be thankful for and rejoice in. Amen. Yes, yes. That his blood has cleansed us and that he draws us to yes. himself. Amen. Amen. And he wants to change us. He wants to help us. And he wants to love us. All we have to do is come to him and present ourselves. Say, Lord, you I am. I want to be changed. You know, that's key. That we can go on about our religious walk. And they'll never be changed. But it's the point of saying, I want it, Lord. I want you to work in me. And saying, I die to myself every day, fixing myself. But God, you're the one who can do that in me. Amen? That's where we need to be and where we need to stay. And then that supernatural work begins to happen in us when we stay in that place that he wants us to be. Amen? That's how it works. Not complicated, it's just a willingness in a place, a position yes. to stay. Yes. Amen. This morning, if there's anything you have need of, you know, we're here together and we're celebrating this new year. And I'm so thankful for my church family that we can spend time with and be with every week. But this morning, at the start of the new year, we're here together, and I know there's needs <coughs> represented in our church body that we're lifting up people that need a touch. And you may have something in your life that you need God to work in your life. And maybe you're that person that says, Lord, I want to place myself on the altar. And I want to say, God, this year, I want to submit to you and what you have for me. And not go about my own life, making my own plans, or doing what I want to do. But Lord, I want you to lead me, to guide me, to take me to the places you want me to be, and to change me, and to make me the person you want me to be. Lord, I want to completely submit to you. This year, do that work in me. Maybe that's your prayer this morning. Maybe you just want to find a place to say, God, I want to be that submitted person on the altar. Say, Lord, here I am. Whatever you have, do the work in me. I, I give myself to you. And if that's you, let's just find a place this morning. And if you have a need and you want believers to pray with you this morning, maybe you're in pain. If you'll just lift your hand like this, saying, I need prayer. But we got brothers and sisters all around you who will pray the prayer of faith and reach heaven for you. Because we love you around here in this body. We love each other. I'm so thankful for that. Even if we don't always agree with each other, we always love each other. Amen. I'm so thankful for that. So make sure that you've got a, someone agreeing with you if you want that this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Let's just We're pray. Going to go to Clint. Yes. Clint and Melissa and the family to Clint is still going through her cancer situation. Amen. Especially to come up that they need a divine touch. Amen. Let's do that this morning. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, we just worship Jesus. Lord, we just lift up every single need to you this morning. We're so thankful. We're so thankful that we don't have to leave this place with the junk we bring with us, Lord. That you have grace here. Your grace is flowing like a river in this house this morning. Lord Jesus, there is no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Who do not walk after the things of the flesh, but walk after the Spirit. And we are those, Lord, in this place today. Lord, I believe that maybe every single one in this place truly desires that you do the work in them that needs to be done. And Lord, as we come before your throne this morning, we come with the acknowledgement that we don't know how, and we are inadequate in our flesh and our ability. But Lord Jesus, you know all things. You believe, you believe in us, and we believe, Lord, firmly in you. And we believe, oh God, that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly above anything that you can ask or think. So, Lord, I pray this morning that by the mighty power of your Holy Spirit, Lord, each one of us, let this be 
a year, Lord, that will be different in our lives. Lord, we don't want to walk the same way and talk the same way and think the same way. We want you to do a miraculous transformation in our lives. Lord, that we can make a difference everywhere we go. That the anointing of the Holy Spirit will be so prevalent upon our lives. Lord, that no matter where we go, people all around us will have to acknowledge the presence of Jesus Christ. Lord, just like the disciples, Lord, when the people said that they could tell that these men had been with Jesus. Lord, that everywhere we go, people can tell that we've been with Jesus. Lord, that the anointing will break the yokes and bring power and deliverance into the lives of those around the city who are in bondage and fear, Lord, and all around the parish and wherever we go. Lord, let us be a light that shines so brightly that the world cannot help but see the goodness of God coming out of us all. Lord, that we may be a witness for you and a representative of Jesus Christ, Lord, everywhere we go. And Lord, we do pray today, Lord, for those who need a divine touch of healing. Lord, uh, sickness and disease can keep us from being as effective as we need to be in the work of the kingdom. So, Lord, we bind those things that you have given us victory over. You said you went to the cross and you wore the stripes in your back so that we could be healed, so that you could empower us to be used to you. So we lay hold of those benefits this morning in Jesus' name, and we receive that which you purchased for us, Lord. The healing virtue, the deliverance that comes to us right now, Lord, we lay hold to it for every single one in this building. Lord, we pray for Clint, Melissa, and the family, Bobby and Linda, and all involved. Put your hand up on that, Lord. Put your hand up on Lynn in that hospital. Lord, that you would just move and undertake and give guidance and direction, Lord, in every area so that she can be completely restored to health. And Lord, there are others that I'm not missing, that I'm not mentioning, but you know them all. And as we as a congregation lift them up before the throne, we believe that you intervene in each one of these lives, in each one of these circumstances we're calling out to you today. And we give you all glory, all honor, and all praise for everything you need and all that you are in Jesus' name. We celebrate you today on January the 1st, 2023. We celebrate you, Jesus, King of kings and Lord of lords of all the earth. Even so come, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah.
Have you had a good 2022? Amen. In spite of the bad things that have been going on in the world, God is still on the throne. Yes. Nobody is going to be from him. Hallelujah. So I'm going to stay on his side. How about you? All right. Praise the Lord. Well, uh, y'all can sit down. I'm going to talk a few minutes. And, uh, but don't sit down on your pocketbook. <laughs> sit before you get your pocketbook out. Because uh, I'm talking to them as I'm talking to, to y'all. Let me say Happy New Year. Yeah. How, how many of y'all uh, kind of wondered a few years ago if we'd ever seen 2023? You know, it's it's here. It's almost. This is one one twenty three. In case you're writing a date today, but you know, Jerry started out, and I almost come up here again. Jerry started out saying, uh, uh, "Step out, and believe God. You know, just have faith. And God can do anything." How many of y'all remember that? That was kind of the start of it. And then, uh, honey, what's some of the message? You can repeat. You said something there about God. You know, can do anything. God is working. You know, He is at work in us, and we need to have faith in every little thing that. Look at all the new little things that happen that God's worked out, and celebrate those things, and always know that He is working. And He's not going to quit working as long as our faith is in. Yeah. Of course, she said a good bit more than that, and I, I felt it again. Uh, that. You know, God can do anything. How many of y'all are pleading for a great year this year? You know, uh, how many of you need to see some miracles? Uh, I uh, I was laying there early one morning, and of course, when I wake up early, one of the first things I do, and many of y'all have done this too, I'm sure, that you pr pray for a brother. Peters, and uh, because, and, and Kathy here just, I think it was last Sunday with Kathy Welch uh, and Archie, but uh, she said, Brother Allen, God's been waking me up in the middle of the night and at night time, you know, and he'd be on my mind, my heart, to pray for him, and I, man, I praise God for that, and I shared that with Brother Peters, and he, he said thank the Lord for Kathy and the others that are doing that, the ones that are praying for him, and being faithful in prayer, and many of y'all come up, and he's been seeing some things I can't that are that's miraculous. And and you know when you wake up, and I told Kathy, when you wake up at night, I mean when it's night time here, it's daytime over there. You know where he's at. So because there's a different time zone, of course you can check it out and see exactly what time it is. But like it may be morning here, it's evening there, and it's it's kind of different. But the prayers, one thing about it, are never. Uh, not regarded by God. You know, the prayers are kept in store for whenever and, and whatever's needed. When you pray in the Spirit, then when you don't know how to pray, when you pray in the Spirit, you pray in the will and the mind of the Lord. So uh, keep them in your prayers. Well, I, I woke up and I thought uh, this was uh, maybe for uh, Brother John, you know, and I always think about him. And I think about others. I think about Lynn and I think about Clinton. I think about Leo, and I think about different ones that are needing a special touch, need a miracle, and I try to call them their name out before the Lord and lift them up in prayer, and sometimes pray in the Spirit as well, and a lot of times pray in the Spirit. Uh, I believe that's one of the most powerful ways you can pray. But you know, if you if you're spirit filled, if you're not, then it don't matter. You pray in English, God, you know, God hears. He and under, aren't you glad we serve God that understands Amen. Mexican. Uh, I like what Brother Ruger says. When we go to heaven, he's liable to greet us. I can't say the word, but he's liable to greet us in Spanish. You know. He's liable to greet us in something else. We'll know then, though, if we're known. We'll know everything. But, you know, it's glad God can understand when you pray. And even when you pray with groanings, which cannot be uttered, God understands that. You know, Romans, the first chapter, talks about it. But uh, when, I was, when I was awakened, and Francis was gone, and uh, uh, every, everybody out of our camp was gone, and I was just there, and, and, but God was there. And uh, I, I felt real strong that, you know, some scriptures I was reflecting on, and we are going to receive an offering here in a little bit.
bit. And and before before we do that, let me let me just say I want to commend you uh, for the way that you have been given uh, in the past the past years, the way you have given this last year. I mean, many of you have just stood up tall and given. And even even if you you may say, well, I didn't stand very tall, but I didn't have very much. Every little bit adds up that helps. It don't make no difference if it's five dollars or ten or twenty. If you give and doing the best you can, that's what you feel led and strong. Well, then God will bless you for that, you know. Because uh, some, sometimes it's kind of like the little widow's mite. Y'all understand when Jesus looked at, was standing there watching the treasury as they were putting in, and he said, this little widow woman that put in, cast in, I think he said, two mites. Since you give him more than you all. They said, What are you talking about, Lord? So let's put hundred dollar bills in, thousand dollar in gold pieces every week. And this little woman put in that ain't even two cents. And you said she give more than we did. And it was because she gave all, you know, and God saw that giving. And whereas some of them just give out of abundance, and that's good too. We need that. Thank the Lord for that. And he wasn't scolding them, he just said that that he recognizes even if it's a small major amount, okay? That's kind of what I get out of it. And and it is important. You know, I've had, like over the years, I, like I told you, and this is a scripture I reflected on, I had over the years, uh, we'd be raising funds like we did or needed to, like we needed an air conditioner, we needed a new roof, and uh, uh, we, we needed air conditioner units. I never even said anything about it. God bless us. We were able to just go ahead and do that and, and all. But uh, there's always maintenance on, on any building. There's maintenance on your house and home, your garage, your shop. You all understand that, don't you? The appliances wear out and everything else. And uh, uh, y'all have stood up tall and just met, met the need, you know, and took care of it. We didn't have to go to the bank and borrow money or anything. We just took care of it because of your offerings and your gift. And then you that are faithful to tithe as well, maintain the regular expenses of the church. And and so I just commend you for that and thank the Lord for that. And uh, But I, I was reminded too, when we were talking about this small amount, one time we were raising money. We, we first of all, we put carpet on the floor when we first came to town. Now when I said we first came to town, this was 48 years ago, maybe 49. Anyways, it's 75 whatever time that is. And uh, so we, uh, uh, <coughs> I would go down to City Bank. Uh, sure wish Kenny had been in church then. I could just let him hand carry the paperwork and I had gone down. They didn't bring it on Wednesday night and don't me to sign. But anyway, that's not how it worked. But I'd go down and see Mr. Pearson and say, hey, we need uh, several thousand dollars for 90 days. He'd do it. And uh, then we'd work and pay and take some pledges and people would just, I said in the next three months, 90 days, pay what you can, pledge what you want, we're gonna, we're gonna go get the money. We got the floor covered, we bought pews for the church, we got rid of more air conditioners in the wall. How many of y'all remember churches where they had 24,000 BTU churches? I mean, the air conditioner, we got that burr, you couldn't even hardly hear it. The preacher, if you were sitting beside him or behind him, well, then we got central heat in there. Man, we were moving uptown, man. We were moving uptown. We was coming right along, and we were paying for the things, and there was something that was raising money, and Sister Nora Dowden, I'll never forget. she come up with tears in her eyes, and had a $20 bill, and said, here, Pastor, I, said, I wish I could give more, but I can't even afford to buy my medicine this month. That ripped me apart. You know, I could have afforded to give her 20, you know, back to put with her 20 and give her maybe 40 if she needed it. You know, I, I mean, I could have done it. It, it might have hurt my budget a little bit, but I would have done it. And, and y'all would have done it too. Man, so many, many of y'all would, would have done it. And I said, no, Sister Dow, you, you keep that. I said, let these younger ones, we had about 40 college students coming at the time. They were faithful. They had, they had rich folk parents sending them. They give them a card, you know, a visa card so they could go to college and charge everything they wanted to on it. So uh, they, could, they could afford to give more than that little widow woman. And I'm, y'all know, I'm sort of cutting up and yet I'm, I'm not in the way because they were giving to you know. And then I had the working people, the middle-aged folks, and some that were doing okay, but they could give and they did. And uh, so I, uh, I said, no, you keep that. And the Lord whipped me real good. And y'all 
some of y'all heard the story. After I went in the office on Monday morning, kind of looking at finances and seeing kind of what the pledges were. And so I go down and talk with Mr. Pearson about borrowing money for 90 days to tend to what we want to tend to. God bless us, we always paid it back way early, never was late or nothing. In fact, he even told me a little story one time. He said, I said, uh, he told me, he said, Brother Allen, he said, you're doing a good job in that church. And I said, oh no, Mr. Pearson, I said, think it's not me. I said, it's God. He said, oh no, wait a minute. Methodist brother. He said, oh no, wait a minute. He said, I saw that church before you came here when God had it all by itself. <laughs> it was only a handful of people. But anyway, I thought it was kind of funny. But I, I real quick, I give God the credit, honor, and glory. But then when I got in that office, I was praying that God bless everybody. And then the Lord real clear said, do you know what Luke 6 and 38 said? And I said, yes, sir. He said, say it. I said, Given shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over, shall what? Shall men give unto your bosom, and with what measure you meet, with them also shall be measured unto you again. Now, and he, and he asked me, he said, you believe that? And I said, yes, sir. Just like I was talking to a general, which I really was more than a general. I said, yes, sir. He said, say it again. I said, again. He said, say it again. I said it again. And he asked me again, did I believe? I said, yes, sir, I believe. With all my heart, I believe. He said, okay, then. He said, it was like this. I mean, it was just about as clear as I've ever heard God speak to me. He said, well, then how can I bless people for giving if you will not take it from them, if you will not receive it from them? How many of y'all understand what I just said? Do you really understand what I just said? Sometimes there's been probably many of y'all, somebody wanted to come give you something, and you go, oh, no, 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 because you knew good money. You, you didn't need it. You knew you could buy your own, or you knew you had two of them already. But somebody wanted to give to you, and they really wanted to give, and, and we said no sometimes. Let me ask you something. Am I in this thing along? Has anybody else ever talk, turned something down and said, no, don't do that. Don't help me. You can't. Anybody ever done that? Yeah. And again, God said, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, first down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. So if we're not willing to take something when somebody, or receive something when somebody wants to give it, then they can't get blessed for giving unless God will speak to the heart and tell them to give it to somebody else. You know, so many, many times. And, and that don't mean you go out and you just got your hand out and want everybody to give you something and you start hinting for everything. Yo, give me this. I need this worse than you. Uh, evangelists have come along through the years, and that's one of the quickest things that turns me off about them when they start saying, I believe God wants you to give me your guitar. I believe God wants you to give me this PA set. I, I know they're not a God then. Because, you know why? Because God can speak to me if he wants me to give to them. How many of y'all believe God can speak to you to give? So that scripture was on my heart laying there in the bed early in the morning. You know, give it, shall be given unto you, good man, first time, say you got to run it over, shall be given unto your bosom. How many of y'all believe if you've got a need, God is able to speak to somebody you don't even know? even in this state or out of state or someplace else or another part of the world and give him your name and tell him to get you some funds if it was funds that you needed. How many of y'all believe God could really do that? I do. I honestly believe it with all my heart. He said, give and shall be given. And shall men, he said, give unto your bosom. It's, it's amazing how God uses men to bless other people. Or he uses women, so don't take offense to that. We're talking mankind right now. Amen. God bless women just as much. So, here's here's what I really felt strong. And then also, y'all know that I've, I've wrote this. And when I say wrote it, I've quoted it a lot because I think it's such a neat scripture. And, and, it, and it has nothing to do with the law just because it was in Malachi. Because it's God's law. Malachi 3 and 9 says, Where will a man rob God? He said, Tithe and offer. 
We rob people will rob you all the time. And often. A lot of people pay their time, but they maybe they're not a big offering giver or a offering giver. When I say big, I'm not talking about an amount right now. But maybe they're not quick to give an offering, but they're quick to give their tithes. And praise God for people that are faithful to the tithes. But see, here's what I said. When we man rob God, he said, tithe and offer. And then three and ten says, now he said, bring all the tithe. And he meant the offering to what he was talking about. People rob God. He said, bring it all into the storehouse that there might be meat in my house. And the provision there, see. And, and, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts. The only place in the word of God says, prove me. How many of you, God proved himself to you? Last year, you really feel like God's proved Himself to you. So, I know He has been. And He says, "Prove me now here with how can we bring it in?" Somebody says, "Well, I don't give to get." Well, I'm, I'm going to tell you something. I believe God is a God of His word, and I believe when we give, God will bless. God will do. How many of y'all believe it? I believe God will do what He said He did. And He said, "When we bring it in." And he said, prove me now here with. The only place in the Bible says prove God. If I will not open, I love it. If I will not open you, the windows of heaven, and pour you out. How many of you believe that heaven's got anything you'll ever have need of? And if it ain't there, John 14, 14, if it ain't there, he said, if you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And one translation said, I'll make it. If I don't have I'll make it. How many of y'all believe God can make something <laughs> or create something? And he said, so he said, give and it shall be given unto you. Oh, no, excuse me. Uh, bring all the time to the storehouse and maybe meet my house and prove me now. Here we say the Lord of hosts. Say the Lord of hosts. The one that gives a message here. And we had a message in tongues and an interpretation of the tongues. It's in the Bible. It never went away. It's still active. It's in the Word of God. Very clear in the Word of God. And we had that manifest in our midst this morning. And God spoke powerful again to us. And he says, Prove me if I will open you the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings. There shall not be room enough to receive it. And verse 11 says, And I will rebuke the devourer for your sake. I want to ask another question. How many of y'all believe God's a, a God of his word? Yeah. Heaven never passed away his word will never. He'll not alter or change his word for nothing or nobody. According to the word of God, that's what he said. His word forever set it in heaven. And if he said he'd open the windows of heaven, and if he said he would rebuke the devourer for our sake, then I just believe my God. How about you? Amen. And now here's here's where here's where you come in, and here's where the here's where the uh, here, here's 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 where it's going to get kind of heavy. And I don't intend them to be heavy, but here's what I felt real strong. I I really felt strong, and this may sound funny to you. I had no real direction. I thought of as to where to give it. But I thought of I thought of Brother Peters. I thought of our daughter Kathy and Dave, the ministry they're involved with and some things that's on their heart they want to do. I thought of Dave Reaver. I thought of two or three other people. But so far I don't have no big direction, but I still want to obey God. And I felt like giving. How many of y'all believe that you can sow a seed of any kind? I mean, y'all afraid to knock your head on that. What's there without soil? That cell will also reap, you know. Just like a garden, if you sow tomato seed, you reap tomatoes. If you sow potatoes, you reap potatoes. Don't you? Come on. You sow bean seeds, you're going to reap bean seeds. You're not going to reap a watermelon for a bean. Now, here's, here's why I felt real strong. I felt like at the first of the year here, and I'm just throwing this out for any of you that want to do the same thing or do something similar. Not that we quote unquote, we need it. Now there's things we need, don't get me wrong. 
but we don't have to have it. We need a new stove in the, in the kitchen back there. How many of y'all know we need a new stove back there? How many of y'all remember y'all don't have a little history on that stove? Melvin Dietrich, Roger's daddy, bought that back in, listen to this, back in 79, and I remember exactly, he told me to go look at one, and I went up there to the hardware sales place there on Uri Drive, I went in there, and the price of that stove was $1,800, and he'd give me $1,800 cash to buy that stove back in 79. Now, stoves are not 1800 anymore, but how do you know that right now, stoves not necessarily important, but if you work in the kitchen and we want to do meals and all, they're pretty important sometimes. My wife was complaining. She said, honey, I'll make cornbread for the meal today if you want me to, because that stove is sorry. Jerry may know that stove is sorry, but still, I use that old sorry stove and I don't cuss it. <laughs> Curse it. <laughs> and I'm cutting up. They don't need it. But, but still, and I appreciate all these years of Melvin Mitchell buying that stove and giving it to the church. He, I don't know if you knew that, Roger, but he did. He bought that stove in there. He even had somebody one time on clean it, and they, they got steel wool after it, scrubbed all the paint off. Well, the paint was supposed to be on it, and then it started rusting. Of course, that didn't stop the cooking part of it. That was years ago. They were just trying to be nice to clean the kitchen. Well, we need things like that, but that's not, that's not the need I'm talking about. Here's what I feel like. How many of you believe that you can sow a seed and get a harvest? You know, Johnny and, and uh, Gary, they do gardens. And uh, I think Brother uh, uh, Mark does it, or did. He does gardens. Well, when they plant the seed, they believe that they're going to have a harvest. And so here's what I want to do. I just felt like obeying God. Some of you may not be prepared for it today. And I felt strong that, you know, I was, I was saving a little bit of money. It's not much. A little bit of money because of something I wanted to do. I wanted to pay something off. And, but I felt real strong that I wanted to sow a seed. I've got family members I'd like to see saved. How many of y'all? Got some family you'd like to see saved. I've got, I've got some debt that I'd like to be free from. I would love for this church to be completely, completely debt free. And I believe God could do it this year. I really do. But I felt real strong for David Allen, and I'm, all I'm doing is throwing this out. I'm not trying to lay heavy on you. But I, I, I've got a harvest that I'm expecting and a harvest that I'm believing God for, and I want to sow a seed to receive a harvest. And right now, I have, and there's things I'm thinking in my head, uh, and especially for people for salvation. But I, I, I prepared. I went ahead and I wrote it out just a little bit ago when I left the kitchen earlier. I wrote that check out, and then I owed a little tithe money too. So I had a little of that little tithe money. I wrote a separate check for that, and I wrote a check for And I'm not saying this to brag, but I'm just saying, I'm telling you, I, I practice what I preach, okay? I don't know any other way to say it. I, I, I do, I wouldn't present it to you if I didn't do it myself. I'm not expecting you to jump up and respond right now. I'm not expecting you to tell that church. But if you if you feel something that you're wanting to harvest, I'm going to tell you the way things are going. One of these days where a lot of wake up and money ain't going to be no good anyway. How many of y'all understand what I'm talking about? I mean, they're fastly headed things. And I won't get into that. But headed toward getting ready for when Jesus does come. Francis is teaching on that on Wednesday night. And so they're fastly getting ready to head and get ready for one world monetary system and a money with society. And, um, you know, the old tin can, if you got something in the tin can, won't do no good. You probably don't. I just make a joke out of dig up a tin can. Most of the time, if you watch any TV, you'll see it's all rusted and money's rotten if you did that. So you can't do that. But anyway. I, did, I just want to—I want to put it out there because I and I felt it real strong. I don't want to be the only one getting a supernatural harvest because I just felt like here's the here's today. Some of you may not be prepared, but if you want to date it for today later on, you give a check or whatever you want to do something. We're going to just believe God for harvest and not have anything that comes in for seed offered today above your record time or anything that will come in because of today, even if you put it in later on this week or next Sunday, 
I'm, we're going to pray special over that and believe God for a mighty harvest for you because I believe we've got a God that gives seed to the sower and then he also blesses the seed song. Right. And and so I, I just want to say one more time, thank you for you that have given already in the past, during this past year. And I thank y'all for you that will be given in the future. And uh, we appreciate you being here today and uh, uh, show you a little bit of appreciation. Didn't know how many was gonna be here. We've got, listen to this, purple whole peas with chopped up ham, smoked ham all in it and got them in it and stuff. And I saw Brother Gary bought a, brought a big old thing of Louisiana hot sauce. And I guess you're gonna share that, ain't you? Okay, yeah, he said, yeah. And we got the boiled cabbage, you know, steaming cabbage, whatever you wanna call it, we're cooking it right now. And we got Mexican cornbread to go with it. And we have no dessert. So you just eat to your heart's content. Don't cost nothing. We're not receiving any money for that. And you eat whether you want to give something extra so see or not. We're not, we're not, it ain't because of that. It's just because we love you. And we, love we, either. Huh? Not for good luck either. Oh, and by the way, Francis wants me to be sure to tell you, your old, how many of y'all are old traditional folks in your family that said, boy, you better eat some hot dog, black eyed peas, and some cabbage on the first of the year so you'll have the food to eat the rest of the year? That's a bunch of baloney. How many of y'all know all it is is the stuff tastes real good, and whether you eat peas or not, you're still going to have provisions, especially if you've got money if you don't blow it and waste it. How many of y'all know God takes care of the birds, and He took care of the prophets a long time ago with bringing them food? So God will take care of you with it. And he said nothing in the word of God where he said, Thou shalt eat black eyed peas and thou shalt eat cabbage <laughs> on the first day of the year. Let every one of you eat on the first day of the year. No, no word in the word can say that. So we just got that back. To be honest with you, a good bowl of black eyed peas or, or purple hull, these are purple hull, a, 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 a good bowl of them with some good cornbread and some good, and I hope it's good. But anyway, man, it's hard to beat. And then you go home. How many of y'all got plenty of sweet tooth stuff at home? You can get some sweet tooth. Or when you leave here, if you go by Dairy Queen, boy, well, they got some tar knobs or, or blizzards or whatever you want to call them. And boy, you can get candy in it of all sorts and throw it in there. And most of y'all, you know, do you want me to get everybody to stand up, everybody twirl around and see that we've been getting quite a bit of that during the holidays anyway already? So we've just gone back to doing right today. I didn't ask nobody, didn't make one or nothing, banana pudding or nothing else. I just want plain old simple. It's free, it, and if y'all don't mind helping, just look at right there again, set a few tables up. And I've already got a couple guys that's going to get your stuff out, and we just want you to enjoy the meal together after we get through with a little bit more of the word here in just a few minutes. And we are going to receive this offering, but it's going to be free. And then if you hang around till everybody gets fed, if you want some of it, then we'll put it in some Ziploc bags or something and let you take it home with you as much as you want, if you want it. If you don't want it, it's going in that blue steel box out behind the church, okay? Because I'm gonna throw it away. But uh, hey, we love you. I thank God for you. I, I hope what I was saying was clear, but I honestly felt impressed in my spirit to start the year off. And I, I've done this a lot of time without ever telling anybody. And I saw a, a to me, it's a large seed, okay? It's, it's hard. And, and when, I, when I said that, get $1,000 that I was saving, guess what? The 1000 won't do what I want it to do, will it? $1,000 most time won't pay your house off. $1,000 won't buy you a new car, will it? $1,000 won't, sometimes it won't buy you a motorcycle or a boat, if that's what you were saving it for. So you might as well give it to God and let God bless you. Let God give you a harvest on you. Let God multiply it for you. Are, you. are you understanding what I'm saying? We've got a big God, an awesome God, that's able to do anything. And please know, I am not trying to just get your money or get in your pocketbook. But I, I just felt like sharing it. God wants to bless the socks off of somebody. God wants to bless the socks off of a bunch of you, I believe, this year. I really do. And, and he'll be a blessing. Some of you don't wear socks. I know I hear the choir laughing now, but uh, somebody throws something at me. Uh, but God wants to bless us. How many of y'all believe we've got a blessing God? I mean, and I'm expecting blessings from God this year. Amen. 
an opportunity. We have a choice. We have the leading and guiding of the Holy Spirit to operate in our life or to turn into our own devices, to turn into our own way of thinking, to turn into what we're comfortable with, to turn into what we experience has taught us and has brought us to where we're at. We, we have an opportunity. And today is that special day that we know, and as I, as I said before, our calendar tells us that it's the first day, January 1, uh, uh, I almost said 19, but <laughs> 20, 23. So it's so good for you to be here today. So good for you to take that time out of your holiday events and schedules to make that time. Make it important enough to know that it's time when it's, it's no other time that we have other than when it's time to come into the house of the Lord. And everything else has to wait. Everything else has to be put off to the side. If you've got things at home that's cooking, it just has to wait until you get back to that point in time that you get back there. So, sound like most of you are probably going to have plans here. But anyway, we've We've got some things I want to share with you this morning. And hasn't the Lord already done a marvelous work in here this morning? I mean, the Spirit of God has, has just been moving in a powerful way. And throughout the whole service, I mean, pretty well preached everything that I had on the heart to say. Uh, but that's okay, because we know who the boss is. And the boss, he, he has good things in store for us. And He's got a lot of willing vessels of just yielding themselves to let the Spirit of God move in them and operate in them and the way that He sees fit. But I have some scripture this morning I would like us to go look at, and I'm not going to keep you long. But beginning before we go there, I want to ask you a, a question or two. A lot of people, even, even church people, set this time aside to make New goals. It's, a, it's just a natural thing to do. We look and see the things that we wanted to do last year or get done last year, and we may not have quite done it. So we have this opportunity, and we have a brand new calendar. I hung mine up this morning. I was actually done it. I usually wait till about the first part of February, the same lot before I hang up a new calendar. I actually done it this morning, believe it or not. But in doing that, I was just reminded again of things that we are planning for the year. You know, when I was, was Brother Allen had contacted me and asked me about ministering for him this morning, that I prayed and I sought God and asked God. And, you know, everybody likes a good catchphrase, don't they? I said, Lord, just, just give me a good catchphrase for you people. Just, just something just to, something I can hit them with kind of like and make everybody smile happy and go about their merry way. Just, just a good catchphrase. Everybody loves a good catchphrase. Something that, that helps you remember something important. Something that gets to the point, but it, it says it in such a cheerful and wonderful way that we don't even realize, really, hey, you know, I just the Holy Spirit just, just moved all over me here. What's, what's going on? But change is what it's all about. And it seems like everything the Lord's been telling us this morning has been about change. Now, believe it or not, you sitting here this morning as an individual, you love change. Usually the first thing out of our mouth is that we hate change. Because of why we are just creatures of habit. We like comfortable things. We don't like things to get changed. But, but really, you do like change. The Holy Spirit was telling me about this. We do like change as long as we're the one in control of the change. Come on. As long as we're the one that is managing the change. As long as we're the one that is orchestrating what gets changed. Oh, we love it. We may start by rearranging the furniture. You know, I, I'm just ready for it to look this way. So we 
we go and make that change. We may look into our closets and make a change there with some of our wardrobe. Oh, we like this. We don't like that anymore. So we, we try to keep up in style or different styles or different fashions. Things that we orchestrate and want to see changed. But it's, it is definitely something for us to think about this morning of who do we want in charge of our change. Don't you think we've tried to handle it for long enough? I know I have. <clears throat> we've tried it for long enough to try to handle our own change. It's time to let the Holy Spirit, who is God, have his way. Amen. To change in us the things that need to be changed. So we, when we go about setting goals and things that we want to see accomplished in our life, I jotted down a few things that people sometimes, you know, want to do, want to set goals. Most of the time, we, that stuff gets kind of old and we go back to what we was doing the last year and we forget about the things that we wrote down. Paying off debts, we talked about that this morning. Just something I've jotted down. Boy, this is one we don't like to mention here, losing weight. <laughs> and I even heard on the news how that you need to be specific when you say, when you start talking about losing weight. Don't just say, I don't want to lose weight. Say, I want to lose 10 pounds. You have to be specific. So that's, that may help somebody here this morning. I don't know. We, we may have said, I'm going to make more time for my family. You know, we, time is our most valuable asset that we have because we've got a limited supply of it here on this earth. So some may say, I want to make more, more time for my family. I want to plan a vacation. You know, we, we may take this time to start planning for the dream vacation, the dream vacation of a lifetime. We may have construction projects that we're wanting to continue, that we're wanting to get started, that we're wanting to add on to this or build up that or, 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 or make this better or improve that. Lord, I just come out of one. We had a bathroom that we just got completed just before Christmas. You know, the good thing about it is it only took me six months. <laughs> and I got through with it before the new year showed up. But I thank God for that, that he helped me, that he, he made the way. He, he provided everything we had. He blessed us in so many ways with the things that we needed to make it happen. We may be looking at all sorts of different things that we want to do, or that we want to set these goals and have these things in mind. But I've come here to tell you something this morning. That it don't mean anything if we're not letting God have his way in us. It's just a facade. It's just a window dressing. You know, it makes us feel good when we go buy something that's new. Because, you know, we just feel like we need to go do this. Just get something that's new. It's been so long, we has got to go get something that's new. And it don't last long. That feeling quickly leaves us, and it's just another thing. But I want to tell you something about God. His mercies, they never get old. Amen. Amen. His loving kindness is always faithful. Right. Brand new every day. That's why today is being the day that everybody looks to as a Start to a brand new life, a brand new career, a brand new look on the way things that we've experienced in the past. Let's just be reminded once again this morning to let God be first, to keep Him first, to look to Him and everything. Oh, it's, it's good, these things that I, I wrote down, it's good to have things you want to do. I mean, life would be kind of boring if you didn't 
plan to do something. But it's all about pleasing him and giving him the place that he desires to have in our life to walk with us and to help us to do the things that we do and to, to be the person who he's called us to be in this life, to, to reach out that we're able to touch this world for Jesus. Somebody somewhere needs you and needs to hear what the Lord wants to speak through you. And I believe that, that he can use any, any person that's willing, any person that will yield, any person who will just say, Lord, here I am. Use me for your glory. Another, another thing that I heard this morning that the Holy Spirit said, it was during a time of praise and worship, of how that we just need more of him. So this morning, I want us to go to the scripture. There's a few scriptures the Lord had led me to, and little did I know that all this was coming ahead of it. But I want to be obedient to read to you some things and to show you that the Lord does really care. And he wants us to know that, hey, it's all about <clears throat> being pleasing in his sight and wanting more of him, learning how to trust and learning how to lean more on his presence because his presence God's been speaking to this church for some time now about the presence of the Lord Amen. and the value that we need to place on it his presence hasn't changed it's the value that we place on it that maybe it hasn't been what it needs to be but the good news is it, it, can, it can increase in value we can make it a place of of increase in value for our life to, to just take this step, to take this day, to take the, the first step to just say, yes, Lord, this is what I want. I want to present myself to know you more, to learn of you more, that you may walk in me, that you may move in me more and more in this coming year. Go with me, if you will, to the Psalm number 132. Psalms number 132. I want to read a few scriptures this morning. I want us to look at David, how that he looked for the presence of the Lord. I want to begin in verse number one, reading through several verses here this morning. Psalm 132, verse 1. Lord, remember David and all his afflictions. How he swore unto the Lord and bowed unto the mighty God of Jacob. Surely I will not come into the tabernacle of my house, nor go up into my bed. I will not give sleep to my eyes or slumber to my eyelids until I find out a place for the Lord. A habitation for the mighty God of Jacob. Lo, we heard of it at Ephrata. We found it in the fields of the wood. We will go into his tabernacles. We will worship at his footstool. Arise, O Lord, into thy rest, thou the ark of thy strength. Let thy priest be clothed with righteousness, and let thy saints shout for joy. For thy servant David's sake, turn not away the face of thine anointed. Church, this morning I want to use this scripture today as just a, if you will, a, a setting for God's presence. Of how that in Israel of old that God dwelt he dwelt there. His presence was upon that Ark of the Covenant. And that how that Israel was strong when they had his presence. As long as Israel was serving the Lord God. I'm not going to take you all back through the, the many victories. And there were even some defeats. And one that is especially notable is whenever... The people went and took the ark before them and still 
Israel lost the battle. And many, many died on the account of it. Scripture references, you can go back and look at 1st and 2nd Samuel. But the purpose that I give this to you today, I believe the Spirit is saying that it is His presence at work in our lives. It is His presence that we need to change us. And as has already been said this morning, the glorious change that happens from the inside and it is seen on the outside. It's not in the the fanfare, it's not in the, the parade, it's not in the presentation, but it's in Him. And it's in that, that sweet, that soul, that, that, that sweet voice that comes to us and speaks to our heart. It gives us that deep, settled inner peace to know that all is truly well with our soul. And to understand how that the presence of the Lord brings us it, it carries us through this life. It is with us when we're going through the valleys. It's with us when we're going over the mountains. It's with us maybe even what seems like defeats at times, but there he's, he's always brings the victory. Can I get an amen this morning? Because God is the God of victory, and he wants to do an impossible, what seems to be impossible, work in each and every one of our lives. But we need to lay hold of his presence. We need to seek after his presence. You see, the presence, if you will, of the ark was at a time hidden. It was placed in an obscure place. There was a time when it wasn't in the temple. And if you go back and look, and I'm not going to go there for time's sake right now. It's in 2 Samuel chapter 6. You'll go there and read that. <clears throat> Whenever David went to go bring the ark, and uh, Yuza, I think it was, was the one who reached out to steady the cart, and uh, the Lord struck him dead. So there was a great fear that then came upon the people and upon David. So they didn't know what to do with it. So there was a guy by the name of Obed Edom. And he says, Yeah, okay, come on. He, he can stay with me. And it said for three months, the Lord blessed the house of Obed-Edom. See, so don't, we don't have to be afraid of his presence. We don't have to fear when he wants to, to come in and make that change. Because that's the, that's the tool of the enemy to try to get us to move in fear and not to just continue believing in faith. But fear struck the people. Didn't know what to do. But Obed Edom, Obed Edom said, yeah, come on, I'll, I'll let it come to my house. So for three months, for three months, the Lord blessed the house of Obed Edom and all that pertained to his house, all of his household. So David then heard of it. He heard of what was going on down at Obed Edom's house. So apparently he looked into the scripture. Apparently they went and they began, they, they brought the ark up the correct way. And it said for every six paces, he was stopping off for sacrifice. Church, I want to tell you something today. There's one thing. You know, I, I'm going to tell you something today that you already know. But what I'm about to tell you is the answer for your problem. I don't want to know about your problem. I've got enough of my own. I don't want to hear about yours. But the good news is, I'm going to give you the answer to your problem. Yes, amen. Amen. Now, the, now the, the thing about it is whether we believe if it's the answer to our problem. It doesn't matter what our problem is. This is the answer to the problem. And it's actually, the Lord is something that he reminded me of that we was told in part last Sunday. And Sister Kathy brought the word to us. Behold the Lamb. That is the answer, church, to every single problem that you and I may or may not have. It is the problem that we're, it, it's the answer to the problems we may not have even encountered yet. It is the answer for everything that pertains to man to behold 
the land to look and see what the Lord has done to perceive and look into with intent who Jesus is and for what he has done for that great work that he gave for us on the cross in Ephesians I want to read real quick chapter 2 just so we'll just kind of bring all this back to us in the New Testament this morning. I believe the Word of God is the Word of God, but I just, something I felt that the Lord led me to, I'm going to read it. Beginning in Ephesians chapter 2. Well, I mean, I could just read it on and on and on, but I want to be obedient here to where I need to start. I'm going to start at verse 19. Ephesians 2. Verse 19. Now therefore, you are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. See, God's all about building something in us. What a foundation we have to be built upon. Wow. Verse number 21. In whom all the building fitly framed. You know, there's something about when you start putting something together. If you don't take care and you don't take the time and you don't have the concern to make things fit together properly, you're going to wish you did later down the road. Mm -hmm. A few years down the road, it might start leaning one way or the other. It might go in, it might go out, it might fall straight in if it ain't done right. But I want you glad to know that when God does something, that he does it right. Mm -hmm. And there's no danger of it becoming undone. It said that, that fitly framed together that it groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. You know there's something about when things start growing. They don't look the way that it did before. There's, there's a change that takes place. You know, we, we talked about planting seed this morning. That life was in that seed. But that seed has to die for that life to come forth. And what you see growing from that seed don't look like that seed anymore, does it? But you know, in the early stages, when a plant starts busting up through the ground and it, 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 it seems like it won't ever, you just want to try to walk around and help it a little bit. Don't no, just just leave it alone. Just because it's, it's, it's going to do what it's supposed to do. And then it'll start developing the little leaves on the sides. Some people call them that's the suckers, you know, that, that that's, that's there. And it's there for a certain season. But then that plant will start growing and it'll start producing and then it'll, it'll come out and then all of a sudden you'll see the bloom start to come out. And then you got the bees and you got the bugs and you got everything that comes and it does their job to bring pollination to those plants. And pretty soon you'll see the fruit begin to develop. I'm talking about growing. I'm talking about a change. See, it can't stay the same. Amen. It can't stay in the same state that it began. It has to grow. It has to change. It has to produce. But it says that in whom all the building fitly framed groweth together together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. Now see we just read through that, and you may not have caught that, but it's in whom. It's in whom that I'm talking about. That's the only way that this works. That's the, that's the answer to my problem. That's the answer to your problem. It's got to be in whom. In whom are we speaking of? In Jesus Christ, as we read about just a few verses before. And then he says in verse number 23, I mean 22, in whom ye also are building together 
or a habitation of God through the Spirit. When David yearned to bring the Ark of the Covenant back into Israel, back into Jerusalem, there was a place that David desired for it to be. There was a place that God commanded that he would dwell. And he chose, he chose that place. He's chosen each and every one of us for his presence to dwell. Absolutely, 100%. He, he's chosen his people, his bride, for his presence to come and dwell within us. That we can be the people of God upon this earth. That we can be truly what he's called for us to be. That we can, can set the example for those who may not have yet experienced. For those who may not have yet grown in this knowledge. That we've always lending a hand, an outstretched hand to help our brother or our sister. To let the love of God to work through us, to change us, to help us to love the way he loves. You know, we can't do that on ourselves, can we? That's the difference between doing good things and having good works. It's, the, it's how we let the Lord use us and, and how we love one another. That is the command. We've been learning that in Sunday school for quite some time. We took a little break from Sunday school, but aren't you excited we're going to get back into that starting next Sunday? That we, that we let the love of God flow in us and change us and build in us. So I give to you today the answer. Look to the Lamb. Not to the donkey. Not to the elephant. There you go. Look to the lamb. That's, right. That's my catchphrase for you today. Look to the lamb. Did y'all catch that? Yeah. I'm gonna say it again. Because it, it just sounds so good to say it. Look to the lamb. Yes. Not to the donkey. Amen. Um, not to the elephant. But look to the lamb. That is the answer to whatever ails us of whatever degree in this life. Hallelujah. And that we behold the Lamb. So that within itself saying this morning, church, I, I just feel today that the Lord has done marvelous work here already. And these words that I've tried to give you this morning, I pray that that with everything the Lord's been saying here this morning, that if there's anybody got any doubt, any questions, anything whatsoever, I pray that before we dismiss this morning and go about our separate ways, and I know we've got dinner and all scheduled here today, but if you, if you feel like there's just something that maybe you need to talk to the Lord about, I want to give you an invitation this morning. Because the things that we're talking about this morning, they are matters of life and death. They're serious matters when it comes to trusting and walking in Jesus. So, Brother Allen, if you have anything you want to come and, and, and say or do anything, I, I feel like today I have delivered what I've come to deliver. Um, and I ask you this morning, if there's anybody here that just, you know, maybe there's just something that the Lord wants you just to take that time and just say, you know, Lord, I, I'm just not what I thought I was. That's a good thing because he's our everything. So I ask you today, just continue to look to the Lamb. And everything that we're doing, everything that we, as we go about our ways and we go about our plans, to look to the Lamb. Thank y'all for being here today once again. And I do wish 
each and every one of you a safe, happy, and blessed new year in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Because he is truly worthy to be praised in every situation. Yes, he is. Amen. Thank you all so much. And let's just praise the Lord with a shout of praise and joy.